All right, well, I think first I'm just going to ask you what your message to the Montana Democrats tonight is going to be. Cool. Unity. I mean, we have got to come together. We have an open governor's race. We have the governorship for 16 years. We can't afford to lose it. We've got to come together behind candidates for both the president and to run against Senator Daines. And there's an open congressional seat, so unity. And talking about the seats, U.S. Senate, House seat open, governor's chair open. How do you see these races shaping up? Montana is one of the most competitive states in America. Every race is close. I mean, we didn't know John Tester had won last year until the next day. Right. When I was running campaigns in Montana, the only rule was every vote counts. And so I think you're going to have really, really close elections. Hmm. Um, so you were instrumental in getting Obama elected president. Um, Steve Bullock is making a run. Yep, first and Montanan. First Montanan. Any advice for him? Um, yeah, look, I think the most important thing in this race, there are 25 mainstream candidates, the deepest field I've ever seen. Yeah. You know, the governor has to figure out how to motivate the base and how to talk to these swing voters. He has some advantages. He's one of the only red state governors who's won in tough states. Right. That message will go well in Iowa. And he's got to find a way to kind of break out of the pack. There are so many good candidates. I think that's going to be every candidate's challenge. Uh, but especially the governor because he's less well known than a bunch of the candidates. I mean, do you think they have enough candidates? I mean, that's a big number, right? Let's talk about that. It's a historic number. We've never yeah. had over 10 real candidates. We have over 25. I met with 34 potential candidates because I'm staying out of this primary so I could just give them honest advice. Yeah. And after spending a lot of time with them, I think a deep field is really, really good for us. We need to have a discussion about what it means to be Democrat. We need to have a discussion about what our economic message is. We need to have a discussion about who can beat Donald Trump. And so I think a big primary will be really good for that. When I helped President Obama at the time, Senator Obama, no one thought he could be Hillary. And it took till the very last primary, the actual the Montana South Dakota primary in two in um, two thousand and eight, wow. uh, till we clinched the nomination, and we came out of that really long process ready for the general election, ready for John McCain. So I'm actually different. Most people are freaking out about all these candidates and freaking out about everyone going negative, and I think it's really healthy for the party. Do you think it's going to be confusing for voters, kind of just trying to? really pinned down because it's just such a huge number. I think it's going to be really confusing, yeah. but I think it's really good, right? right? Especially because the first two states are places where you really have to campaign. Um, you know, yeah. you have to go to all 99 counties in Iowa twice, and I think that's really healthy. You know, one swing voter, once someone said, are you going to vote for Obama? And she goes, I don't know. He's only been at my house twice. And, you know, you kind of really get to know them. Yeah. And I think that's the greatness of the yeah. primary process. It really allows, you know, people to really kind of take a real assessment because the way you win a presidential race um, President Obama said it was an x-ray of your soul and I really think that's true you know voters in Iowa New Hampshire really get a chance to figure out who you are that's why I love Montana politics right after the last election people knew who John Tester was they knew right. who Max Baucus was for years and you know, they had a personal relationship with him and I think that's really healthy yeah okay um, um, let's see our last three presidents Trump Obama Bush, first thing that comes to mind when looking at contrast and leadership style? Um, vision. All three of them knew exactly what they wanted to do with the country. And voters, you know, will be fine even if they don't agree with you on necessarily all the policies. They just want to know that you have their best interests at heart. And the way you win a presidential election is about economic message. And all three of those guys were very clear how people's lives were going to be better by their candidacies. And my message tonight, and when I meet with all these candidates running for president, is what is your economic message? That's how you win Iowa. That's how you win Montana. Um, and that's what Barack Obama, George Bush, and Donald Trump a little bit have in common. Hmm. Um, can you talk about the style you were, this is more me just being interested in you, you really yeah. had a lot of technology, I mm -hmm. mean that was a huge part in your, yep. can you talk a little bit about that and maybe how that might help now? Yeah, it's really interesting, you know, at the beginning of the Obama re-election campaign we went and spent a bunch of time, we followed 100,000 voters for a month of their life, 24 hours a day, to figure out how they process information, how they live, what their hopes were, what their dreams were, and what you got a really big sense was is the average person now communicates using technology, email, Facebook, cell phones, text. That really is what our parents did in the backyards over the fence with their neighbors. Now yeah. we do it online. The average American now sees 6,000 images a week beamed at them. And the way they process those things is through 
through uh, email, is through the internet. And so we really invested tens of millions of dollars in trying to use people's cell phones, their technology to help them mm -hmm. advocate for President Obama. And it's very funny, President Trump got asked what he learned from Obama the most, and he said technology. Obama taught me you have to have a personal relationship. And whether you love or hate Trump, he still does it every day on his Twitter. He sure does. Yep. <laughs> yeah, right. For um, better or for worse. Yeah, right. right. It, it, it's true, though. I mean, and it's right. It's being talked about, right? Right. So, I mean, exactly. Right. He's way, driving the conversation. Yeah, right. he is. So it's, right. it's working either way. Um, how is Congress doing serving their constituents? I think much better. I think the new Democrats in the House understand their job is to be reform. Their job is to change Washington. I think that's what President Trump thinks his job is. Mm -hmm. I think the one thing all Montanans agree on without party is Washington's not working. And so you have a bunch of people there who understand it's time to get some stuff done. I wish the president would remember that message a little bit more. Um, but, you know, hopefully we'll see some more bipartisanship. Uh, and I think, you know, you're seeing a lot of people go into Congress trying to get some things done because our opponents the Chinese, the Russians, they're doing stuff. And we've got to pass an infrastructure bill. We've got to fix prescription drugs. We've got to you know, balance our budget. We've got to get some stuff done. And hopefully we send some people to Washington to do that.